Hey, thanks for joining me. It's a follow-up on the FT897 that I bought from Japan that I've been playing with. I wanted to keep you guys from doing what I did, so I'll show you. I was on the internet during the vacation, and I was sort of looking, knowing that I needed 455 kilohertz uh, mechanical filters, and that I was looking for something like a 300 or a 500 hertz bandwidth. So. Here's what came in the mail, which is a little bit funny. So the, the top one is a Yesu, which sounded better. It's an XF-110CN, and it's a 455 kilohertz um, mechanical filter. That's good. Actually, it might be a crystal filter. I don't know. It's so big. But then the other one is a Collins mechanical filter, and it is an XF-115C, also 455 kilohertz and narrow. So looking at the two of them, I measured them just now. So the giant one that doesn't fit, that's the 110 CN. That one is 62 millimeters between the pinholes. And if you notice, the connectors have four connections on each, although most is ground. There's only, it looks like one active pin on each end. So this filter might be good. And I saw another guy who actually wired coax and put filters like this over on the side. I'm not doing that. So. I got this one in the mail. This is actually the correct one. It has three holes or three pins on this end and four on this. And it is 51 millimeters between the pins and the board itself is uh, 56 by 15. So if you look, there are three pins in the back. Let's uh, zoom in a bit for you. So there are three pins in the back and four pins in the front. So we will put the three pins on the three pins and the four pins on the four pins. And that's all there is to putting in a crystal filter. I took the screws out. You didn't need to watch that. And then when you put it back, here's the, the speaker wire is a guy here that fits in the back corner. So we'll put that back on a bit slowly so we don't bend any pins. Because I made it dark by covering it with the cover. Okay, that's in. Then I won't inflict all of the screws on you. We'll just put this back up on the shelf. Careful not to smash our filter that is too big. And then we can, pardon my video editing, <laughs> as you can tell there is none, but that's what we get. So then I learned, as I showed you in the last menu, we hold down this for one second. That comes on and then if we're lucky we tap this once actually sure we're all in we're already in menu mode i think no we're in channel mode so one tap gets me to menu mode and then we can find what i hope is a filter to turn on oh there is now a filter now so there's crystal filter and then there's the 500 hertz filter we just installed so we'll zoom in again a little bit. You can see that. And we'll tune in a station. There he is. And we'll turn on the 500 hertz filter. And success, we have a 500 hertz CW filter. So that wasn't so bad, except for buying one that I don't need. So if you, uh, I think these, I look, if you happen to have an FT-1000, let me know and I'll <laughs> we'll, we'll make a deal. Because um, I, I don't think I'll mount that on the side like the other guy did. That seemed like a little bit of extra work. And, and I have to do say it, it was reluctant, but I did spend 200 bucks on this filter. But maybe so far I would say it sounds promising and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll see. From, from there, or I guess you could tune around a little better and then turn the filter on it once you find it. And this is just a number station, but... It does do the right thing. So that's promising. So I think we'll enjoy playing with that. And we'll try our CW tuning indicator here, which says we're in the middle of the pass band. That guy's a little bit too weak to, to activate that tuning indicator, I think.
There we go, there's CW tuning. Now we'll try the filter. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's about five minutes to mess around and put a filter in your radio, so not bad. Thanks for watching.